Hey everyone, Chris Lopez here, and I got Joe Mast with Castle and Cook sitting next to me. And this podcast episode is part of our deal analysis blitz. It's the first of many, many episodes that we'll be going through. And so on this one, we're going to be doing a room by room house hack in Aurora that closed in quarter one, 2020. So, Joe. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Chris. I always love talking about these. You know, I love talking about deals, love talking about prior transactions we've done, upcoming transactions. Really excited about this new series. Yeah, so just so you guys know out there, we're going to try to keep these quick, short, and to the point and try to keep a consistent format. So we would love to hear your feedback on these, what you like, what more details you would like to hear, and just the general flow of things. All right, so jumping into it, let's talk about the investor profile on here. So uh, this investor for this house hack, uh, he's a single young professional and he he is buying rental properties to work towards FIRE. That's the Financial Independence Retire Early. And he totally gets it. He is willing to sacrifice some short-term inconveniences or willing to have some short-term inconveniences, I should say, for building long-term wealth. Hence why he's house hacking room by room, because numbers make sense. So his goal with this property is to hopefully live for free while living there or reduce expenses as much as possible, and then have a good long-term rental once he moves out, because he'll do the house hacking, nomading strategies combined. So after about that one-year mark, that hopefully he'll be moving out to go to house hack number two. And so uh, that's his profile. And Joe, surprise, surprise, where do you think we got the deal for this? My favorite secret place in the whole world of finding deals on the MLS. Yeah. All right. We talk about it all the time. People like to talk to us about door knocking and uh, I've got this, you know, direct mail campaign I'm going to do and I think I can find some deals by sending out a postcard. Um, those are all great things, but guys, the majority of deals are going to be found on the MLS. 90 plus percent of deals on the MLS, really easy, right on the shelf for anybody to pick up. And as I mentioned a few podcasts ago, um, I did a 12-month analysis of deals that me and my team have closed, and every single deal we closed for no matters and house hackers were off the MLS, which was no surprise, but we were 100% on the MLS. You, you mean on the MLS, not on off. On the MLS. <laughs> yeah. What did I say? You said off the MLS. Well, they, they came from the MLS. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Details, Joe, details. Right. All right, so investment property details. So this is just the kind of classic thing we're out there buying for house hacks. It's a five-bedroom, two-bathroom detached single family home and we really like this location it's north aurora near the anschutz medical campus so why we why do we like that it's because it is a you know kind of the the lower price points in denver metro uh the i think the long-term runway and potential for that area is just outstanding yeah. like that medical campus isn't going anywhere yeah right it's not going to go out of business it's not going to have ups and downs and swings with the economy. Um, it's there. People need care. People need nurses. People need doctors. Um, I think this is a great geographic location to be near a, a major center that's going to be there for a long time. And so hopefully you get some appreciation and there's going to be strong room by room rental demands there between the university, traveling nurses, all the medical students. Like there's a lot of people there that, hey, they're going to be in there for one or two years and they want to find this, you know, room by room to keep life simple. So it's a great location for that. Uh, it's a great layout of the house. It's a uh, ranch style and it's, uh, I feel like, I think it's three bedrooms, one bath upstairs, two bedroom, one bath downstairs or, or something like that. But it's split pretty well to actually pre be pretty conducive for doing a room by room rental, whether you're living there or once you move out. So the list price was three seventy five on the MLS. Our purchase price was three seventy five. And overall, the condition is what we'd say above average. It was just in good shape and a great play for a house hack and a rental. So finding the property, uh, this one, the client knew what he wanted and had realistic expectations. He knew he he had been doing his prep work and we had spent uh, probably about two or three months just kind of doing that very beginner um you know, talking, education, running numbers, looking at properties, a lot of stuff of just, hey, check out things on uh, at the MLS. He went to a couple open houses. We checked a few properties. As he ran the numbers, he just got very dialed in, saw his property, uh, pulled the trigger. So getting our contract, uh, it was at ask. And, you know, oftentimes we say we throw in some secret sauce for our contracts. This one didn't need much secret sauce. It was just a, a good deal we found, and we were able to, to play matchmaker. Yeah, this one was pretty easy to get our yeah. contract which is, I mean, we'll take those all day long in the sure. current Denver market. Um, so just getting some more details about the property, really good condition, uh, newer HVAC and above average finishes. So like granite countertops. Uh, the one con as we went through into the inspection was it had above average radon. 
I can't for the can't remember the exact number, but you know the EPA I think it's that four threshold mm-hmm. they have. So we were above that, and so of course for our clients we always say, hey, do your inspection, do your shooter scope, and do a radon test. Yep. And you know he said the one thing that came back was a radon. And a lot of times those are about $1,000 to install with some of the uh, vendors we use. So we negotiate a $1,000 seller credit for the client to install radon. And Joe, you did the loan for this client. Yeah. And I mean, surprise, surprise, he did a 5% down conventional. Pretty, Tell us why he did that. Pretty straightforward. I mean, generally that's going to get you a really good return on your investment for a house hack. Um, 5% down conventional. If you have great credit, that's going to give you really low monthly mortgage insurance, really low interest rate. Um, certainly you could do FHA with 3.5% down, but you're going to have slightly higher uh, mortgage insurance, maybe a little bit higher payment. So he was able to save up 5% for his down payment. Um, worked out great. You know, We completed an appraisal, came in at the contract price, no repairs needed, and then seller concessions from the left side, $1,000. So the way that works is the, the seller said, hey, we'll give you $1,000 in lieu of installing radon. Um, well, that $1,000 goes as a credit towards the buyer's closing costs. And so now, what's the difference between a credit and reducing the price? Um, so the credit, let's just say uh, the let's just say his closing costs were $5,000. We'll see on the next slide. The credit means that instead of paying $5,000 in closing costs, he pays $4,000. So he's got $1,000 left over to go install the radon system. If you just reduce the price by $1,000, all right, what happens is you're just simply decreasing the loan amount you're not bringing $1,000 less to closing, you're borrowing less. So he'd still have to have $1,000 from some other source to install the radon. So the credit is always gonna be the way to really put that cash back in your pocket, the most direct way. Yep, and that's what we like to negotiate because for what you just said. Yep. Uh, this does have mortgage insurance because we didn't put down at least 20%. He just pays it on a monthly basis. Um, pretty low price mortgage insurance. And uh, he did opt to pay, uh, I think, one or two points to buy down his interest rate uh, to a super low rate at the time. So let's talk about this because, I mean, I know when you know we got this under contract, we sent the file over to you so you could start the lending process. The client came and met with you. And, I mean, you presented options for prepaying mortgage insurance. Mm-hmm. And not prepaid mortgage insurance, right? Correct. Yeah, and that's something you always go through as we get properties under contract. And as we said before, we'll keep saying it: you can ballpark it with estimates before under contract, but you really get you, you get the real numbers once you're under contract. Joe can actually run all the numbers and say, "Hey, if you prepay it, it's this amount. If you pay it monthly, it's this amount." And then here are some options for buying down your interest rate. What uh, you know? Let's talk. What do you like? Yep, exactly. And a lot of folks, I, I talk with a lot of folks, are like, "Well, I really want to dial this in before I go under contract." Hey, I get that. You're not going to be able to dial it in until you go under contract. Some of the variables you need: the property, the address, the zip code, where do you stand at the time, where are interest rates at the time. There's so many variables that you can get a general idea ahead of time, but you're not going to be able to make that decision until you have all the variables starting to get ironed out. So that's why you know use the spreadsheet, figure it out on your own. Once you're in a contract, we're going to sit down and spend an hour together to really determine what's best for you. Great. All right. And as Joe said, he uh, bought down the interest rate. So as we get into doing more of these deal analyses, we want to give you, uh, discuss some more of these levers we play with as far as adjusting cash flow, adjusting interest rates, adjusting PMI and all this. So start telling you what we're doing with PMI and interest rates buy down. And Joe, I mean, for most of your clients, whether investors or just normal, you know, retail owner, OC people, do most people buy the rate down? Yeah, almost everybody. It okay. Generally, it, when rates are low like this, it almost always makes sense. Yeah, and that's one of the things we look at when we sit down. Here it is with zero points. Here it is with one, two, three points, and and then the client picks. Yeah. All right. So moving on to the spreadsheet. So we got some screenshots here of Joe's uh, six point two version of the spreadsheet. So just going to run through it. And if you guys want to see the numbers yourself, make sure you click the link in the show notes and I'll take you to the blog post and all these images will be also screenshotted uh, on the blog post. You can see them yourself. So we'll do our best job to run them through it, but hopefully you get the gist of it. So title, it's a room by room house hack in Aurora, uh, one unit primary residence, 5% down payment. And that next field in the spreadsheet, you can either select prepaid or monthly. We selected monthly since the client did that. 375 for the purchase price. Altogether, his acquisition costs were about $7,500. And that's, you know, including, it's a pretty good ballpark, including uh, normal inspection costs, appraisals, all the other closing costs. Homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance. Title insurance. Buying the interest rate down. points. Yep, everything. Um, so it's about seventy five hundred for that loan cost, uh, fifteen forty. That's I mean fixed from you, Joe. Yep, flat. Uh, his down payment, five percent of three seventy five, is eighteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Then we add in the seller credit, 
I should say add in. We actually subtract in, subtract yep. the seller credit. So on the spreadsheet, it shows $1,000, but it's a really a negative $1,000. So drum roll, all in for the initial investment, just under $27,000. Pretty good deal so far, $26,765. So $26,000 to buy a $375,000 property. I, I have a feeling this is going to work out pretty well, but so far this looks great. So his interest rate, he got the rate down to 3.875%. He did a 30-year fixed mortgage, which is what I always recommend to my clients. Of course, they always talk with you, Joe, yep. but 30-year fixed is just kind of the way to go in my mind. Um, so going for the numbers here, so we're going to actually talk about the rental numbers uh, as for when he moves out, because really the whole idea of house hacking nomading is in our perspective, not find a place where you can live for for 20 years and, and save money, but it's a way to accumulate rental portfolio or rental properties. So we're much more concerned about how does that property perform once you move out after that one year mark and how does that work as a rental in your portfolio. So his plan here is to rent out four bedrooms at $800 each. So he says four people can easily live comfortably. Uh, he's going to test to see if a fifth person can, can squeeze in the property for maybe an extra seven or eight hundred dollars a month there. But he says, you know, based on the layout, bedrooms and bathrooms, they'll just you know might be tight, so he might keep that extra bedroom as some extra living space. Uh, so right now he is living in one of those bedrooms and he's running out the other three. But when he moves out, it'll be all uh, all four bedrooms rented out, maybe all five bedrooms. So four bedrooms times eight hundred dollars is. $3,200 a month. Now we put in a factor here of 5% vacancy. And actually the client and I were talking about this uh, just because he's very much going towards uh, a lot of like basically like students that are at the nearby school. And he said, hey, as long as you're on that cycle of when they turn over, which is about two times a year, he goes, your vacancy can be like really, really low. So we put 5% vacancy in there to be a good feel. And I like to kind of assume a little bit higher. Rent increase will say 3%. Annual appreciation rate will say 5%. I mean, Joe, a 5% appreciation rate for that part of town, I mean, that's realistic in my book. Super realistic. Average in Denver over the last 40 years, if you've listened to any of our podcasts, average appreciation, 6%, last 40 years. Um, average annual rent increase, 4% for the last 40 years. We knock one point off of both of those. Annual rent increase, 3%. Annual appreciation rate, 5%. Very, very reasonable for this market. And just to keep things generic, we're putting in a generic effective tax rate of 25% because we actually know where our clients are. And uh, so we'll just kind of put that in there and you guys can always adjust it to yourself. Now going on to farther down some operating expenses, he is not gonna be paying for property management. He will be handling the room by room leases himself while he lives there and when he moves out. And so we are planning on an 8% reserve. So basically taking 8% of the monthly rents to saying, hey, you know what? Things break. We need to put money aside to replace windows or roofs or hot water heaters one day. So 8% is a good rule of thumb we use for detached properties. And that's basically about one month's worth of rent for the year. There's no HOA. And going on down, his real estate taxes are about $225 for the year. He got really Two, low rate. 2225 per what year. What did I say? You said 225 per year. Sorry to cut you well, off. You guys know what I meant. Well, right? hey, but anybody listening on the podcast, it's, <laughs> it's $2,225 yeah. per year for the taxes. Thank you. If you're seeing the video, you see that. Yeah. But, so, uh, very, sorry, yeah. sorry to be nitpicking. No, no, that is <laughs> that's actually kind of important. Um, yeah, so 2225 bucks a year. Property insurance, just under 1000 bucks. This is a super low rate. Um, got it, you know, from just shopped around, I got a very low rate. I do want to say that the taxes we gave, that's the 2019 assessment because taxes everywhere, I think, went up yep, from absolutely. 18 to 19, like property values did, so taxes will as well. So water and sewer, these are based off a couple of utility bills he's gotten so far. Uh, he's expecting about $1,200 a month, or I'm sorry, $1,200 a year for water and sewer, about $100 a month. It'll be just under $300 a year for trash. Um, and he's expecting about $1,500 a year in Excel bills for electric and gas. And he's going to be providing Wi-Fi. So since this is room by room, he'll be providing Wi-Fi. Estimating about $600 a year for that. Can I comment on that real quick? Yeah. So the seller, or pardon me, the owner is going to be having all these utilities in his name. That's going to be included in the rent. So that's going to do two things. One, it allows you to drive a little bit of a premium in your rent and charge a little bit more because you can tell your landlords, hey, all this is included. But you need to factor that in that these are going to be expenses. So many of our long-term landlords 
the tenant pays water, sewer, trash, electric, internet, et cetera. In this case, the owner, the landlord is paying it. And so it's going to allow him to command a little bit of a premium in rent. So you just want to keep that in mind that if you're paying this, make sure you're charging a little bit more in rent. If you're not paying it, maybe charge a little less in rent. And I always recommend there, like I know for the, uh, you know, a common way to write these leases or have agreements with your tenants is that, hey, here's the estimated amount towards utilities. If things skyrocket, or skyrocket, me as a landlord have the right to bill you additional money. That way you don't, in case you get some like, you know, a-hole tenant that just leaves the water on for 24 hours a day. Right. All right. So moving on to the analysis for after he moves out. So altogether, his annual expenses are going to be just under about $10,000, which leaves him a net operating income or NOI of about $26,600. So his annual mortgage payments are going to be about $20,100 a year, plus the estimated mortgage insurance will be about one twenty eight a month based off of Joe's calculation for about $1,500 a year. So subtract out those, and his cash flow is going to be about $4,900 a year. To me, you're putting 5% down to buy a property. Now, he's going to be hustling and working to get these rooms filled, but 5% down with a cash flow positive property doing five grand a year, that's a great deal in my book. That's solid. And I mean, that's going to be reflected right there in the cash on cash return. Cash on cash return of 18.6% because he's investing 20, almost 27000 getting return uh, after moving out after one year of $5,000. That's great. I don't know where else you can put $27,000 into an account and get $5,000 a year. That's, that's my really ally solid. savings account doesn't do that. Yeah, no, my uh, U.S. bank doesn't either. Cap rate is also very strong. $26,000 of income, net operating income on a 375 investment. That's a 7.1% cap rate. Keep in mind that cap rate is after paying utilities. Right, so many times the the landlord is not paying the utilities, and we're struggling to get a six six and a half percent cap. This was a seven point one cap, and the owner is paying utilities. And where do you find this deal? Some super secret place, right? Oh yeah, the MLS on the multiple listing service. And then the last one, the gross rent multiplier, one seventeen. Um, so it's a three hundred seventy five thousand dollars price divided by thirty two hundred dollars a month. That's a one seventeen GRM. As you guys know, the lower the GRM, the better. I think this is fantastic. Yeah. So walk us through the uh, return on investment quadrant. Joe, from a, just a high-level overview, because, I mean, we're seeing some triple-digit returns here. Yeah, we'll start on the right-hand side. This property is going to go up 5% a year, so it's going to gain $18,000 that first year. Cash flow, we already touched on, $4,900. Depreciation, we're going to write off the depreciation on the property, and he's going to get tax benefits based on his 25% tax return of $2,800. His debt pay down, the tenant is going to be paying down that mortgage with their rent every month. Uh, so he's going to be reducing that principal and interest by, or pardon me, reducing that principal by $6,400 a year. Add all those up, that's a $33,000 return. He only invested $26,000. So you look over on the left side, that appreciation, he's getting a 70% return on his money in appreciation, 18% return on his money in cash flow, 10% return on his money in depreciation, 24% return on his money in debt reduction, Add that together, that's a 123% return on investment. Um, I certainly don't get that in my 401k, do you? No, I do not. And this is just, I mean, you know, there's a couple things going on here. And the first thing, realize that these are giving first year returns, not 100% accurate because he'll be moving out you know, after year one, but numbers will be really close. So you get the gist of it that it's just amazing returns. But the two main reasons we're seeing really high returns here is because he's using leverage. He's got high leverage he's using that 5% down. He's got a great owner-occupant interest rate, which is sub 4%. And to make sure the property cash flows, he's doing some extra work. He is hustling. I mean, he's going to be managing three room, uh, three tenants while he's living there and then four tenants once he moves out. But he's doing that because, great, he's willing to do that for a few years to accumulate properties. And then once he hits his number goals, I'm sure he'll probably stop, stop renting room by room, go some traditional long-term rentals. But he's doing this to just juice his cash flow and juice his rental property acquisitions. So I love this type of deal. Hats off to him for doing it. Uh, and if you guys need help finding deals, your, these deals yourself, 
call me. This is what me and my team do uh, pretty much seven days a week. If you need help financing it, talk to Joe. That's what him and his team do about seven days a week. Seven days a week, 24-7. We can help you with these. Yeah. All right, guys. So we'll wrap up this one. Uh, keep on listening for more deals in our current deal blitz. And please, please reach out with questions on lending, finding properties. Give us feedback on how you like this deal format. We just want to start blowing through these to show you guys that there's still a lot of really good deals out there in the current Denver market. Thank you.